Apparently they let people back into venues and everyone just kind of forgot how to act. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Mandy. You're watching Swell Entertainment. And today we are talking about the current state of concert going and concert etiquette post-pandemic. Um, COVID is still a thing. Every time I say that, people get mad at me. I don't care. I sound sick as hell, but it's not because of COVID. I just have a head cold that makes me sound like I'm talking to you from the bottom of a well. So this is something that I have been hearing um, about the current state of live music and live music crowds ever since uh, in-person events really started happening again about halfway through 2021, towards the end of 2021. Personally, I did not start going back into concerts again until 2022. Been to two concerts this year. I went to Fletcher and I've been to a Five Seconds of Summer concert, which I did do a video on. However, pre-pandemic, uh, these are all of the uh, musical artists that I've seen live. Most of these were actually pre me turning 18 as well. So I, I mentioned that because there's a lot of talk about why the current state of things have been and a lot of speculation about, you know, the age of the audience. So I wanted to point out that because we're going to talk about some of my life music experiences and what I've experienced since and the sentiments I've seen on TikTok and on Twitter and uh, just in general. But first, let me take a second to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, the greatest mobile game app of all time, Raid Shadow Legends. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I have been courting Raid Shadow Legends for the last two years to bring Raid to this channel and into your hearts and phones. Raid Shadow Legends takes us to the world of Teleria, where you will build your team of champions. There's now over 600 and all of them come from unique factions. Personally, I really dig the High Elves faction. Their homeland, Aravia, has been around for thousands of years, surviving the fall of the Lizardman Empire. They helped the humans form into civilizations and defeated the orcs when they formed a huge horde and attacked the continent. Siroth, the Lord of Darkness, convinced a bunch of elves to go evil and attack the kingdom. There was a civil war that nearly completely wiped out the elves, but Aravia survived. They rebuilt and now it's stronger than ever. The elves will make a great addition to your champion team. But this month is a big deal for Raid because they just released a new faction, the Sylvan Watchers. We've got Forest Elves, we've got Ents, we've got Druids, we've got Fae, and I'm going to summon them all. They also have a full lineup of events, including a new season of the Forge Pass where you can get some of the most powerful gear you've ever seen. And if you're an Amazon Prime, Remember, you can get exclusive raid rewards right now. This is the perfect time to get started with raids. So go ahead and click the link in my description box or click this QR code and get bonuses worth $30. We are talking one epic champion, 200k silver, one energy reboost, one XP fill, and one ancient shard. Now that is quite the welcome package. Get started with your champions today and thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Obviously, I can't possibly talk about every live performance. I'm not gonna be able to talk about every single instance of someone getting hurt hurt, someone being injured, someone being a bitch at a concert. I just, I can't. I tried doing uh, crowdsourcing of potential interviews for this video, um, which I have done before. And usually, this is the thing, usually I get like two or three legitimate uh, stories from people um, or potential interviews and then they kind of fall through or they don't fall through. And then I get like four or five things that have nothing to do with anything, but they want to do an interview for something else when I ask for people with experience on a certain topic. So that's what I was expecting when I went to TikTok and posted this video. I am thinking about doing a video about how concert etiquette has just kind of gone to sh If you are someone who has been to a concert recently and you have any experiences or anything about how you feel that the vibes have just overall changed around live music, ideally also you would be someone who has been to concerts prior to the pandemic, but Either way, I'm open to a variety of different experiences. Please just comment down below. If you are also interested in maybe going and doing a little interview uh, on Zoom or something, comment that down below as well. That's not what I got. Um, I got a lot of people who wanted to do Zoom interviews and a lot of people with various uh, opinions about this topic, and I got overwhelmed. So I did not do a single Zoom interview, but um, I'm gonna be talking about all the comments uh, and going through a bunch of them that were on that video uh, because I do think they are uh, very good insight and I think that's a little more digestible for myself. All the production of this channel is me. I do my own bitch work and then I outsource my editing work to William. <laughs> That, that's it, everything else is me. So um, this was a lot and I got overwhelmed. So that's my bad, sorry, my anxiety won out. For my own experience with live music, I've been going to live shows since I was about 
six. My dad used to have a booth at the Orange County Fair every summer. And so I went to quite a few concerts that were actually at the OC Fairgrounds. My very first concert ever was a Jessica Simpson concert. Then I believe it was Hilary Duff when I was about 11. Not entirely sure, but there's a couple of different live performances and things in there as well. But personally, I love live music. I spoke about this in my When We Were Young video. I love live music. It's my favorite way to listen to music. Um, it's my favorite way to discover new artists is listening to openers and the like. And so all in all, the live music experience is the ideal experience for myself. So right now when people talk about the current state of concert etiquette, and like these kids don't know how to act. Why don't people know how to act? There are some people who point out like, oh, well, I've never experienced it at this type of show, or I've always experienced it at this type of show. For example, um, like I said, I went to a Five Seconds of Summer concert this year. Uh, prior to me turning, God, I think the last one I went to was 2016, so I would have been 18. I have been to, I think, a total of three, no, four this year. I think this is my fourth time seeing Five Seconds of Summer live this year. Once with them opening for One Direction, then two alone, and then the one that I saw at this most recent tour. The thing about Five Seconds of Summer fans, um, and I don't know if this is because they also came up alongside uh, One Direction, they've always had a very dedicated fan base. Um, and I'm one of those people, so I'm allowed to comment on it. <laughs> My point is, is that uh, the stands within the Five Sauce fam, which is what they used to call themselves. I don't know if they're still called that. The fans of Five Seconds of Summer used to be Five Sauce fam. I don't know if it's the same anymore. But there's always been a um, few obsessives within that. Um, in particular, I remember there was uh, one interview where Callum Hood, the bassist for Five Seconds of Summer, uh, talked about how there was one concert venue where they found girls hiding in the air vents. Uh, to get into the venue early to try and meet them. In an old video of mine, I think I made a video called In the Event You Meet Five Seconds of Summer or something. I'm playing Lost in Reality from this fetus clip of myself, so I had to silence it because I will get a copyright claim. <laughs> In that video, I referenced how there was a video going around that I think if I remember correctly, was from a Five Seconds of Summer concert where a girl was going full on ape shit and having to be carried out by three security guards talking about how she was going to kill the security guards. Be like, let me let go of me. I'm going to kill you. Let go of me. Like losing her mind. So that's the behavior that I was expecting from Five Seconds Summer concerts. Okay. Pre-pandemic, they were on a bit of a hiatus and then they released Calm and then there was a little bit more of a gap in there. And then now they've released Five Sauce Five, which I'm sorry, you could have picked a better name. I don't know why you let people bully you guys into having that title. It's literally any other title would have been fine. Five Sauce Five, you've been a band long enough. I think you can have a title for your album, but that's just me, okay? I was surprised that they were doing shows like the one that I went to at the Palladium that had large general admission spots with uh, a pit of sorts, because for the most part, those shows that uh, I have been to were stadium shows and um, that had no general admission. It was all seats. Everything was seated. Not a ton of space for barricade at all if there was any standing room whatsoever. But for the most part, they were seated shows. And I was surprised when they just did the Take My Hand tour where, where it was a lot of standing room and a lot of general admission pit tickets because their audience, in my opinion, is not an audience that can handle a pit. They just aren't. And I think there are various artists that are like that. There have been pits that I've been in that I've felt very safe. And there have been pits where I don't feel safe. And part of that is because I'm a 5'2 woman, but there's just generally, you can kind of tell based on the fan base. And if you are at all familiar with an artist, I think you can kind of tell where the difference is. For example, at When We Were Young Fest, I felt safe the entire time. I never got into the pit in anyone. I didn't do any mosh pits with any of them because I was, you know, working the entire time and I needed to be prepared to go. Everyone was pretty on top of it there. But Five Seconds of Summer with their fan base, they're just not a, a band that I would associate with it being a good idea to have a general admission set up. That video in particular was reviewing the Five Seconds of Summer sound check, but I talked about the venue and the issues that I had with the venue and Live Nation setup and all of that, because again, I don't see Five Seconds of Summer as a band anymore with the size and the dedication of their fan base, where it's a good idea to have general admission, just because of how rowdy their fan base can get and how diehard they can get. In my opinion, I think established musicians know how rowdy their audience can get. And I'm not talking rowdy and like, oh yeah, we're throwing beer bottles and shit. I'm talking rowdy as in they will claw each other's eyes out to get a photo of their face. Something I will point out now 
in 2022 post Astro World is the number of people going down at shows and or the highlighting of people going down at shows because people going down at shows is something that's always happened. I've gone down at a show. I was 17 at the time. It was at the Shrine here in LA. Sleeping with Sirens and All Time Low were like the co-headliners and then uh, Neck Deep and One OK Rock were the openers. But I got a panic attack in pit. I was smushed, I could not breathe. I think it was during Sleeping with Sirens, but the reality of the situation in that one is I just got smushed and I couldn't breathe and I had a panic attack and I got myself out of the pit. I don't know if it's becoming more highlighted now because of what happened with Astro World. It's my understanding that people are dropping and they're either losing consciousness, about to lose consciousness, um, they're having an episode like I had and having a panic attack, or there's just some sort of an issue where they are trying to get security to them. For the five seconds of summer show, like I said, I was on balcony, and that one I could see quite a few different instances, and okay, I don't want to say it, I don't want to say it. It didn't happen during five seconds of summer's set. It happened during the openers and before the openers. I don't want to deny that this is happening because I know this happens. It happened to me. This is a thing that happens. But I don't know if it's like there, there's there been some speculation about like how much of this is people kind of giving the opportunity for artists to kind of have like a white night moment and get like that video of like, hey, lights up. Is everyone okay out there? Is everyone okay? Like are they giving them that opportunity to have that moment? Because, oh my God, they're such a good person, which they should do that. But also, I just don't think it's happening at every single show, you know? I, and so I do wonder how much of it is that. At When We Were Young Fest during the second Saturday during Bring Me The Horizon set, uh, Ali Seg stopped the crowd because people were flashing their lights. And there was a couple of different instances where I could see from where I was, the spotlight guys had moved their spotlights to show security where they needed to get to. And in those instances, again, that's security or spotlight lighting people drawing attention to certain things. But it only stopped the show one time. What happened a lot during when we were young towards the end was there was this one group of guys that I was like, oh, these fuckers are gonna fight. They're gonna go. Like they were getting up in each other's faces. I was far away between two other barricades. I was not worried for my safety at that moment, but these two dudes were about to fight. Security escorted one of them out. And at another point, one of them threw uh, water at another guy. They got him out, kicked him out. But for the most part, like the, Crowds were pretty mellow. I did hear at one point an EMT go to security and say, I need to get to GA plus because I have someone unresponsive. But it, again, when you have in general admission plus that area she was talking about, that was one of the lounge areas. And so I don't think that was someone losing consciousness and it was dark at that point. So it wasn't the heat, I don't think. I think in that instance, it was probably drugs or alcohol, which happens at these events. As far as shoving and things go like that, for the most part with concerts, I just assumed that it was because I was getting older and everyone younger than 20 looks like a toddler to me. That's what I thought it was. And show other people at shows shoving when they're clearly a teenage girl and things like that. I'm like, am I just like getting annoyed because I'm older and I like, I, I was once doing that. Like, is that what I'm thinking? But then there are people who are like, no, this has definitely gotten worse. So I went to Fletcher in March um, and I had a very good time at the show. I saw her at the Fonda. I would say it was a pretty full show. I had general admission for that show. I hung out by the sound booth because again, I don't like being smushed all that often anymore. So I hung out by the sound booth where I had some room to breathe and I got to see the music and see Fletcher, no problem. As far as getting in outside, I talked to a bunch of different girls outside. We were getting along, no problem. Didn't see any animosity or anything. Um, the show itself went well, nothing crazy happened. Everyone was pretty fine. There was no, like, no one went down. Uh, she took a boob signing break, which I thought was fucking hilarious. I love women. More recently, I've been seeing that there's a bunch of TikTok videos getting shown to me of people at more recent Fletcher shows talking about how mean Fletcher fans are and how mean women at these shows are getting and the speculation going around there. And I don't know what that caused because my show in March was totally fine. Literally, my issue was that I'm allergic to talking to girls. That was it. <laughs> that was it. So I could not partake in the speed dating that was happening in the audience. Overall, the show and the crowd was pretty tame, frankly. And so I was interested to see how in just the span of a couple of months, how the crowds at the shows have changed for Fletcher. And I don't know if it's uh, the more mainstream success, more popular, I wonder how much drastically her audience has grown or um, has gotten a little younger, maybe. This could all be chalked up to what I call your name syndrome or YN syndrome. Now, your name syndrome is not exactly a medical term, 
but it is coined from what I believe is the true sickness of fandom, where you believe that you are special enough to basically have your own fan fiction moment at one of these shows. Your whole goal is to be noticed by one of these performers. And in order to do that, you need to make sure that no one else is noticed by one of these performers. You think that if you just get the attention of this person, you will have a shot. This is not to be confused with main character syndrome, which is basically what's happening in all of these crowd work videos that are going viral on TikTok of these comedians doing shows and then people are right away trying to get featured in the show as an audience member or a heckler for this comedian to basically do crowd work for them so that they can have their viral moment on TikTok. That's main character syndrome. That's a completely different thing. That also could be talked about here, but I did not talk about it here, but it falls into the same category of people wanting attention. <laughs> so let me go through a couple of the comments that I got on this video. Um, if I don't get to your comment, I'm sorry, I can't get through everything. The Sarah Kathleen said, things are way more hostile now. I'm seeing more fights at shows and just a general lack of courtesy for the people around you. Astro Melody replied, yes, lack of courtesy is a big one. People think they can be shitty just because you're strangers. I've seen a lot of reports about this coming from uh, the Harry Styles shows. I do think a lot of that of what I'm hearing from Harry Styles shows is because his concerts are ongoing and they are so many of them that that's where we're getting kind of the largest swath of data from is these Harry shows. Not a Mermaid 710 said, see, I regularly attend punk shows, festivals, and honestly, for me, it's been the same. Everyone's pretty respectful, but loud and happy to be there. When We Were Young Fest was a pretty mixed bag as far as ages go, especially especially for Sunday. Saturday, I talked about this in the When We Were Young video, it was way more elder emos. And I would say that the crowds were, though there was a few more moments where I was like, genuinely, there's gonna be a fight. They were both pretty mellow crowds as far as things go, even for uh, crowds where it was a lot of phones in the air which we can talk about that. Irvid Blaine said, I've seen it particularly at smaller concerts lately, and it's more of a lack of interest in openers in the alt scene, which hasn't been the norm. Yes. I wouldn't say that it's been, there's, mm, okay. So there's a couple of different instances where we can talk about openers. I do think that openers in general have always kind of been a mixed bag as far as reception goes. Though I like openers, I have a lot of friends who don't like openers at all. I think that that's kind of always been a very mixed opinion amongst people is like, you know, how much time openers should get. So Pierce the Veil is currently opening for I Prevail. And ever since King for a Day became popular on TikTok, Apparently people have been buying up I Prevail tickets just to go to Pierce the Veil's set as an opener and then leaving before I Prevail. I wouldn't say I've never heard of that because I've definitely heard of that before. There's a variety of artists I think that that's happened to over the years. I think I'm more surprised because Pierce the Veil isn't new, like they've been around for a while. So the fact that they're seeing this treatment now, I think I'm more interested in that than like the overall, you know, lack of respect for the actual headliners, even though that is something that can be discussed. And because, you know, someone probably does want to see I Prevail live. Why are you taking tickets just to see Pierce the Veil live? Like I said, I don't think that's something that hasn't happened before. I live in ATX and the concerts have just gotten wildly more chaotic and disrespectful. Plus people camp out nowadays here. I only go to shows with less than 500 people and even those shows have camp outs in crazy crowds. I wonder if the reason that camping has become more prevalent is because they've now started relying on general admission or standing room only pits for larger, more popular musicians to get more people in the stadiums so that they can sell more tickets to these shows. And so because of that, you have people who are again, already more dedicated because they have a larger audience. You have a more dedicated audience just from the nature of being a larger musician. You're gonna have a handful of people who have that part of their brain that are like, yes, you are my focus of all time. So then you have that. So you have a larger number of people who are willing to go to these shows and get as close as possible for the experience for the photos, the videos, the TikToks, the like, so they're more willing to camp out. However, I do think the topic of people camping out has become much more looked at now that people are much more aware of the homeless situation in various cities. Um, I believe they swept the homeless encampment that was there for the Austin shows in Texas. I believe they did it here in Los Angeles as well for the Harry shows. So I think people are more critical of camping out because of how these people are being treated that actually live in these areas where these fans are camping out for this one night show that they already spent a shit ton of money to attend. Fifth Pigeon, 
on TikTok said, I don't have a ton of concert experience prior, but I work at a concert venue and a lot of people are more hesitant to help. Like the drunk bathroom girl mentality is basically gone unless someone is super drunk high. But at the same time, people are a lot rowdier as if they're overcompensating for being in lockdown. And now they're out, they're taking advantage of it and being kind of pushy about it. Kind of goes back to my original point of like, how real are these moments of people going down like are they people being like go down so we can get their attention and they'll look over here oh my gosh thank you thank you they're down thank you i go to concerts alone if i collapse tomorrow would there still be people who were trying to get attention to help me is the question small not at all 999 said i feel like venues are far less organized in general now i think it depends on the situation um because i have seen a lot of venues are very on top of it personal opinion i think the palladium concert i went to was oversold i think it was very unsafe in that pit i think there was far too many fucking people there so in that instance it's not a matter of it being unorganized. If someone needs help, it's very hard to get someone to them where they are if they're buried in the middle of the crowd. I heard an instance in particular of someone recently, I believe at a Harry show, pretending they couldn't breathe so that they could get up to barricade. Now I have not seen proof of this, but I've heard a couple of different people talk about it. That's fucked up. So I've actually noticed this quite a bit with people who came of age during the pandemic, like they were a minor, before the pandemic started. I've noticed a lot more entitlement. I noticed this with a lot of the influencers that I've met who um, were younger when they blew up and are now, you know, their first real job is being an influencer and this is their first time making money and they feel like they're on top of the world and nothing can touch them. I've seen the entitlement there. And I don't know if that's just the case with a lot of that part of the generation for growing up during a pandemic and kind of the okay, the world's gonna end at any time, so I have to focus on me, you know? And the kind of hyper-individualism within that age group. I have no idea if I'm making sense. Cassie Craft said, I say both. I saw both Five Saws and Harry Styles in the past few months, and honestly, I haven't felt any hostility or changes in the pit vibes. Still very caring. You and I have very different experiences with uh, Five Seconds of Summer. <laughs> oh, Ariel Elise said, if anything, she's noticed people have been a little nicer. Tired Pigeon. I went to a Halsey concert just as a plus one, and it was my first concert since I went to a Wiggles concert when I was four. But in the concert, there was a point where Halsey was not feeling the vibes of the crowd, I guess, so she did Castle again for more energy and asked if this was our first Halsey concert to which there were a lot of hands raised. I don't know. It's not the most crazy story, but I think that she could feel the difference. I mean, I think an artist re-performing another song they already performed just because the vibes were off. I think that's a big deal. What the heck? I've never heard of that. A lot of the things I've been hearing about with complaints for crowd is coming from the Harry Styles shows, which again, like I said, there's a lot of them happening. So that's where a lot of the complaints are coming from. I'm assuming there's also going to be issues coming out of uh, Taylor's tour when she finally goes on tour. I got the registered, which is nice. So maybe I'll be able to go see her. I'm not going to any Harry shows. Um, I did not get tickets. I didn't try. As far as people being like rude to each other in general, I don't know how much of that that I've experienced because I, I do have to think about this when I talk about like people being rude in crowds and things like that. How much of it is someone actually being rude and how much of it is my own anxiety about social situations? And like, oh, are people not talking to me because I look like they don't want, I don't want them to talk about me because I'm anxious, you know? So like how much of that that I'm experiencing is because of my own perception onto the world. As far as people being rude to uh, employees and things like that, usually when I'm at shows, I'm like, oh, has everyone been cool? Like how has it been post pandemic? When I was at uh, the Palladium, I talked to one woman who was working there and she was like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. They warned us this crowd could get pretty crazy. But like we had a music festival the other day that was like an EDM festival and they were pretty chill, but there was a lot of drugs. So I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> which I thought was funny. I mean, I can appeal to this part of you maybe. Um, do you want your favorite artist to have the reputation of someone who has shitty fans? There you go. Let's do that. Let's put it that way. I would hope that you would care how you treat people, but do you want this to reflect your fave? If nothing else resonates, maybe that will. This is just kind of something that I wanted to touch on because it's something that I keep seeing about. And you know, I, again, I don't really have solutions to it other than like encouraging everyone to be considerate of others. I am someone who I find that it's very hard to make friends in your 20s, um, especially as someone who works from home and all of that. 
And uh, aside from my own anxiety, I would love to be able to make friends with people who like the same musicians as I do. And so I think that that's something to always encourage. It's like, yeah, you're you're in a place surrounded by people who like the same things you do. A lot of people go to shows alone as well now too, like I do. And I just think that it's a good idea to, you know, say hi to someone, say hi to someone. Hi, you like so-and-so? Me too. What's poppin'? What's your Instagram? Let's make that more of a thing. Let's be chill. Live music, I think, is a really great thing. And being able to experience that after everything that the world has been through, I think, is a beautiful thing. And so I would hope that people, you know, focus on the good of these shows and not just, like, someone standing in the way of my TikTok. Have you been to any live shows in the aftermath of the lockdown? What have been your experience? Did you comment on the TikToks and you're, you're annoyed I didn't do an interview with you? Are you annoyed I didn't do an interview at all? Let me know. Comment down below. Remind you I have a podcast, as well as podcast. Remind you I have merch, like that mug back there. Shout out to my patron. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. You can also like support my Patreon, link down below. Like someone on my social media. That'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Hands down, my favorite person that I've met at a live concert was at a Hosier concert at the Hosleyward Forever Cemetery. My friend Emily and I were sitting next to this woman who was 82 and had met Hosier like over two dozen times and kept talking about how great he smelled and his man musk. She was a rock star. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris P, Crash PC, China, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Incognito, Jack Ray, James, Joe, John, Jordan, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexis, Louise, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Rob, Sam, Serena, Ciara, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Hovenley, Plastic, Tom, Cordy, Randy, Wendy, William, Zendry's Wing.